Hi, I'm Bushcraft Boy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do something a bit different than normal. We're going to be learning about a serious problem. Ticks. Tick numbers are rising rapidly and the problem is becoming worse and worse. Once you have watched this video, please look at the links listed below and go on the website. Anyway, on to the video. Welcome back to my video about ticks. Underneath you will find a whole load of links for official websites with good tick advice. I am making this video because there is so much bad advice about ticks. But don't take my word for it, don't take anyone's. I'm only nine, I'm not a doctor. When the video has finished, please look at the websites. Anyway, today you will be learning about what is a tick, why should I be worried, what to do if bitten, and myths or dangerous advice. What is a tick? Basically, a tick is a type of spider. They evolved long before we did. We know that they were around as far back as the Cretaceous period because they found ticks encased in amber that are between 65 million and 146 million years old. That's older than my dad! As you can see in this photo of this hard-bodied tick, they have eight legs and a flat body. The legs have hooks at the end so they can grip your skin as they walk. Because they can't jump or fly, you normally get a tick on you by brushing up against low-level plants like grasses and ferns. They hook on the legs, then help the tick get a firm hold on you so they don't fall off and have to find another plant to climb up. The body isn't segmented like an insect. It's really just a stomach with a mouth at the front and, and legs, eyes and spiracles at the sides. One of the most common mistakes when you hear people talk about a tick is that they tell you to grab the head to remove it. If someone says this, what you know for sure is that they don't know about ticks. Ticks don't have a head. Their eyes are halfway down the sides of their bodies. A sensible place for a tick to have them as it keeps them above the surface of the skin they're feeding on to see what's happening around them. The bit people mistake for the head is actually just its mouth. It's made up of three parts that stick out from the front of the tick. The barbed tube which it pushes down through your skin to feed through and two palps one on each side, which are just the feeders it uses to help locate a good place to bite you. The barbed feeding tube is pushed deep down into the skin and the barbs are so strong they then hold the entire tick very firmly in place. With this tube pushed deep down into your skin you might be wondering how they breathe. Well, they don't breathe through their mouth. A tick breathes through openings in its sides, called spiracles. It only needs to breathe between 1 to 15 times an hour. Ticks are tiny, so small that most people don't feel them crawling on them to find a good place to bite you. As they feed, they get bigger and bigger as they fill up on your blood. An unfed nymph can be as small as one and a half millimetres long. Once fed, adults can grow to over one centimetre long. In the UK, 
There are three types of tick family. Each of these families has hundreds of subspecies. In the UK alone, there are around 900 different species of tick that we know of. This is where the trouble starts. We don't know all that much. As recently as 2014, some of our own official government websites still thought there were only about 20 species. To put it simply though, what we do now know is that there are two main types of tick. I'm not going to try and pronounce the Latin names. The soft tick family. They are called soft ticks because, not surprisingly, their bodies are soft. The name is a bit of a clue, really. The hard tick family. They get their name from a protective hard shield on their backs. There are also two groups. The only difference between the two groups is the position of their bottoms. I could go into more detail, but I really don't think you want to hear about a tick's bottom. I don't. Why should I be worried? Ticks feed on blood. Usually animal blood, but if a person walks past, they're not fussy, and some are just as happy to feed on us. If a tick picks up an infection from an animal, when it next feeds, it can pass the infection to the next animal or human it bites. Ticks are unlike many other bloodsuckers. A mosquito bite is like a smash and grab raid. It bites, sucks up some blood and quickly leaves. Often you'll feel a sting when it bites you. When a tick bites, it can stay there for days. The reason this is possible is that as it bites, it does so slowly and gently while releasing a type of saliva onto the area which numbs the skin, so you are unlikely to feel anything. Because it is looking to stay attached for a few days, it needs to attach itself very firmly so that it can't be easily dislodged. The one most likely to bite humans in Britain is the sheep tick. The sheep tick will feed from a wide variety of mammals and birds. Bites from other ticks are also possible, including from the hedgehog tick and the fox or badger tick. There are other species of ticks in Europe and North America, and they carry different diseases. If you go abroad, you need to be aware of this and take suitable precautions. The brown dog tick has been brought into the UK on dogs and can survive and reproduce inside a home. Something our domestic ticks can't do. In the USA, the highest risk comes from the deer tick. A common mistake people make is that they think you only find ticks in certain parts of the country or in certain habitats. Sadly, this isn't true. You can find them anywhere. There are cases of people getting tick bites in city parks and gardens as well, as well as out in the countryside. As you can see from this map of the world, there are very few places left where you don't find ticks. Frighteningly, they are getting more and more common. Mild winters and changes in the use of pesticides have led to a worldwide explosion in tick numbers in recent years. The Big Tick Project has tried to map out the main risk area in the UK. As you can see on the map, they are to be found everywhere, with the vast majority of the country being classed as medium to high risk. What diseases do they carry? This list is not a complete list of diseases ticks can carry. These are only the ones that have been found 
by testing ticks in laboratories. The problem with that is that most people who are bitten by a tick don't keep the tick to send for laboratory testing. This is just the list of diseases that are proven to be found in ticks. The most well known of these diseases is Lyme disease. Most people who have heard of Lyme disease think about the distinctive circular rash you can get where you were bitten, usually around 3 to 30 days after being bitten. It looks like a bullseye on a dartboard. What most people don't know is that only about 1 in 3 people with Lyme disease will develop this rash. Some people don't get a rash at all, while others can develop several rashes in different parts of their body. Early symptoms of Lyme disease. Some people experience flu-like symptoms, tiredness, muscle pain, joint pain, headaches, a high temperature or fever, or chills and neck stiffness. Later symptoms. More serious symptoms may develop several weeks, months or even years later if Lyme disease is not treated early or left untreated. Pain and swelling in the joints. Problems affecting the nervous system. Heart problems. And inflammation of the membranes surrounding the brain and spinal cord. Some of these problems can be treated, although the longer it takes to get treatment, the harder it is to recover. Some people go on to develop long-term symptoms, similar to those of fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue syndrome. This is known as post-infectious Lyme disease. Doctors still don't know for sure what causes this. It's important to remember that not all ticks carry infections. Also, not all ticks carrying an infection will pass it on to you. For your own safety, you need to assume that the tick may have an infection and you should deal with it straight away. What to do if you're bitten? This is the part where there is so much bad information spreading around the internet. If you find a tick on your skin, all medical advice is the same. You should remove it using a pair of tweezers that won't squash the tick, such as fine tipped tweezers, or use a tick removal tool. The sooner you remove the tick, the less time it has to infect you. If you are using tweezers, Gently grip the tick as close to the skin as possible and pull steadily away from the skin without crushing the tick. If you use a tick removal tool, follow the manufacturer's instructions. Wash your skin with water and soap afterwards. Then apply an antiseptic cream to the skin around the bite. There are lots of different types of tick removal tool on the market. Some are better than others. The kind that was recommended to me was the O-Tom tick. But it's your choice. Bad, stupid and dangerous advice. The internet makes everyone think they're a doctor. They can watch a video, become an armchair expert and then start giving medical advice to everyone. As I said at the start of the video, don't take my advice, I'm nine, I'm not a doctor. Use the links at the bottom of this video and follow their advice. I'm just giving a brief summary. I decided to make this video as I'm sick to death of seeing people who don't know what they're doing. So, Here's a list of myths and things not to do. Myth 1. If you're not careful, you'll leave the tick's head in. As we've already seen, a tick doesn't have a head. So, if someone tells you to grab its head, you know they don't know what they're talking about. Myth 2. 
If you don't remove a tick correctly, you will leave the legs in. Nope. The legs are on the sides of their bodies. They're mistaking legs for mouth parts. Myth 3. Ticks can be suffocated, so they drop off on their own. This is probably the most dangerous piece of advice yet. A tick breathes between 1 to 15 times per hour. Using alcohol, aftershave, oils, butter, paraffin, petroleum jelly or nail polish or whatever other silly thing they try to suffocate a tick may cause it to vomit its gut contents back into you. Think about it, it's not exactly going to be short of breath for a while. So it knows that if it vomits the blood and any infection it has back into you, it will be smaller and so it will be easier to escape. Myth 4. If you burn or freeze off a tick, it won't leave its head in. OK, this is really dumb. Burning a tick causes damage to your skin and can also cause the tick to inject infected blood back into you as it shrivels in the heat. Myth 5. You turn the tick clockwise or anti-clockwise and it will come off more easily. Nope. The feeding tube has barbs on it. Unless you use a specialist tick tool, twisting just snaps the feeding tube off, leaving it buried in your skin. Myth 6. Taking off a tick with your fingers, fingernails is the best method of tick removal. Another stupid method. Not only could you squeeze the blood out of the tick and back into you, you could burst the tick and spatter yourself with infected blood. Myth 7. You can see if a tick's head has broken off by checking it after removal. Uh, no head. Myth 8. If the bite area is dry, the tick hasn't regurgitated. The tube goes onto the surface of the skin. You can't possibly tell what happened. Myth 9. If an attached tick hasn't fed, it's safe. In order to attach to you, the tick vomits saliva onto you to numb the bite area. It vomits. It can pass infections. Myth 10. If you don't get a tick out quickly, it will burrow right into the body. Again, no it can't. It gets bigger as it feeds. Some females can be 11 to 15 times their original size after feeding. They need to take heavy machinery with them to make a hole that big. Myth 11. If you leave a tick's head in, it will grow a new body. Uh, no head? Notice a pattern here? Myth 12. If you surprise a tick, it won't grip on. Being boo to a tick is about as stupid as it gets. When the mouth is buried in your skin, the tick is held in place by barbs. Jump up and down. Invite its family over for a surprise party. Do what you like. It makes no difference at all. Myth 13. If you leave a tick in, it will lay eggs inside you. No. Nope. They lay eggs on plants or on the ground, so the new ticks are ready to catch hold of a small animal to start feeding. So, I hope that helps you understand a bit more about ticks. Please, please don't fall for the dangerous advice out there. Just go out and enjoy yourself. Beware of the risks that there are of ticks. Because Lime is no joke. I'm Bushcraft Boy. Thank you for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe. Until next time, bye!